Hello. Today, I'm going to show you this problem where we have to find and classify the turning points of this equation. So first of all, we need to differentiate it. And to do that, we're going to have to use implicit differentiation. So we get all the different types here where we have just a normal term where there's, we're differentiating with respect to x. So this term has only x's inside it. This one has only y's, so a variable we're not interested in. And this one has a combination of x's and y's. So we'll go term by term, starting with the y squared. So we're differentiating with respect to x. So when we have a term that doesn't involve x, we can think of it like the chain rule. So we're trying to do d dx of y squared. So we can use the chain rule and say this is the same as dy dx. And then d dx of y squared. Sorry, d dy of y squared. So effectively, when we have a term that doesn't have x inside it, and we're differentiating with respect to x, we can differentiate the term with respect to y and multiply by dy dx. So y squared is going to give us 2y dy dx. For the 3x squared, well, this is nothing different um, to normal differentiation, considering we're doing implicit here. So this is going to become two, uh, 6x. For the minus 2xy, we're going to use the product rule. So we think about holding the 2x still, differentiating the y, that will give us the minus 2x. And when we differentiate the y, we get dy dx. And now we differentiate the 2x, and we get minus 2. And the y then, we hold still, so it just stays as y. And as always, our plus 3, the little constant just goes away. So what we have now then is an expression, well, an equation that involves those of dy dx's. So we're going to group all them up on the left-hand side and factorize. So we have 2y minus, oh, sorry, plus the 2x from this one. We write that all in brackets and multiply it by dy dx. And left on the right hand side then we have a 6x minus 2y. Next step then we're going to divide by our factor on the left. So we have dy dx as the subject. So dy dx is going to be equal to 6x minus 2y over 2y plus 2x. I'm going to divide top and bottom by 2 as well. So now we have 3x minus y is equal to y plus x. Beautiful. So we want this dy dx when it's equal to zero, so we can find where the stationary points are. So dy dx equal to zero tells us that 3x is going to be equal to y, because what we need when we have a fraction, if the fraction is equal to zero, then the numerator is equal to zero. So therefore, 3x minus y is equal to zero, so 3x is equal to y. So what we have now then are original equation is going to be a minimum or maximum or stationary point, uh, so a point of inflection, whenever it intersects with this line. So now we have to substitute this line back into our original. So if we replace our y's with 3x, what we get is that we have 3x all squared, which is 9x squared, is equal then to the 3x squared minus 2x times y, but y is now 3x, so 2x times 3x gives us 6x squared, and our plus 3. So all together then, if we bring all the x squared to the left, we have 12 of them is equal to 3. So therefore, x squared is equal to a quarter, and x is equal to plus or minus a half. So we can plug that into our equation here, and we get y then should be plus or minus 3 over 2, with the plus being the plus and the minus being with the minus. Um, beautiful. So now we know the locations of them. We could write this as um, coordinates, so we have 1 half and 3 over 2, and then minus 1 over 2, and minus 3 over 2. But we still need to determine their nature, so what type of stationary point are they? And to do that then, we need to find d2y dx squared. So effectively, we want to differentiate this thing. So if we do that over here, d2y dx squared, and we'll use the quotient rule. So when we want to differentiate a uh, fraction, basically, u over v, it's going to become uv minus uv over v squared with dashes on the outside. So on the original u and this, this v over here. So what that gives us, u dash is just going to be 3 minus dy dx. Remembering that we're differentiating this thing over here. So u is 3x minus y and v is just y plus x. Uh, v then, well, y plus x. I'm going to take away u, 
which is 3x minus y. And then multiply it by v dash, which is going to be the differential of this thing. So the y becomes dy dx, and the x becomes 1. So we have dy dx plus 1. Run a little bit out of room, but hopefully that all fits. Um, over then, v squared. So y plus x, all squared. Beautiful. So we've ended up with a dty dx squared that involves dy dx's. That's completely fine, because whenever we go to sub in the point for x and y, we already have an equation for dy dx. So we can just replace this whole part with this bit. However, we're only concerned of using this equation when we already know that we have a stationary point. So when this thing is equal to zero. So we can kind of rewrite our equation. If we think about d2y, and I'll move this left a bit so I get some more space. So if we think about d2y dx squared, when dy dx is equal to zero, well, we can just replace all of these bits with zero. So our numerator now is just going to be three lots of y plus x. Take away, we still got the 3x minus y, but now there's only one of them. 3x minus y, not dy dx plus one. Uh, bottom hasn't changed at all, so we still have y plus x squared. And now then, if we simplify the top a bit, for the x's, we have 3x here and another 3x over there, but it's subtracted the second one. So altogether we have zero x's. And for the y's, we have a 3y, and then these two minuses make a plus, so altogether we have 4y. So our numerator then simplifies down just to be in 4y over, well, and then the bottom is x plus y, all squared. Beautiful. So now we want to substitute in our turning points into this thing and see what we get on the other side. So if we stick in... Uh, the first one with positive values, so a half and 3 over 2. What do we get? Well, 3 over 2 times by 4 gives us 6. And the bottom then, if we add the 2 together, we get 2. Square it, we get 4. Simplifying that, we have 3 over 2, which is positive. So that tells us this was a minimum. Doing the same then for our negative values. We should see that the bottom is going to be the same because we're going to do the same process. We square we add them together so we get minus 2 and then square it. So again, we're going to get 4. And the top now, we're going to get minus 6 instead of plus 6. So this thing is negative, which tells us it is a maximum. So beautiful. We found our stationary points. And we labelled each of them as well. Knowing that the one with the positive values was going to be a minimum. The one with the negative values was going to be a maximum. So beautiful. That's all done. Thanks very much.